Hello my friends and welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex. This is the 2021 New House Home Studio Tour slash gear rundown thing. Welcome. So this is very much still a work in progress. Uh, I have a lot left to do in here, a lot more treatment to go on the walls, a lot more storage and shelving, and just general decor stuff that I want to do. But the bare bones of the operation has been set up. I guess we'll just start with the desk, right? This is the output platform in gray. This is the first time I've ever had a piece of furniture that was like purpose built for, you know, production and recording and stuff like that. So I've already made a video on this desk back in the old studio. So if you care about, you know, seeing a lot of studio stuff, uh, you can check out the old space. It had a lot more character and stuff. And um, I had like three and a half years in that space to really dial it in. But I wanted to get a fresh start here and just have a whole new vibe. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but like the last space was very like gray, dark walls with the with the wooden shiplap type thing. Like sometimes I called it my creativity dungeon. But this time with the new house, the whole theme of everything is like open air, like natural light, kind of minimalism. I want it to feel like I'm going to work. I'm walking into an office to start my work day and I'm not surrounded by all this I don't know, stuff to distract me and get in my way. So yeah, that brings us back to the desk. Super minimal, clean lines. What's on here is only what needs to be on here. Right now there's headphones. Anyway, um, you got the three rack spaces here. Uh, the middle one is the Behringer X32 rack. That is my interface slash monitoring situation slash... I guess that's it. I, it it's completely overkill for a home studio. It has 16 XLR inputs on the back. Uh, it has a bunch of different outputs. Everything is configurable. It's like a fully fledged mixing console for a, for a live show. I can control it from the iPad. Like if I wanted to make a custom in ear mix while I'm recording vocals or something, I can fully like treat my vocal with the onboard effects here, so I don't have to take up processing power while I'm tracking. At most, maybe I need like six discrete inputs at any given time, like just to have everything kind of set up leave the guitar mic plugged in, leave the vocal mic plugged in, leave a stereo pair uh, for acoustic guitar, you know, stuff like that. It just helps to have things ready to go whenever you need them. So that's the middle rack. Over here, this is the power distribution that needs to stay on all the time. Stuff like the computer, uh, my Google Home, uh, charging things like for my keyboard, um, the Acoustasonic has a charger, I can plug that in. So this never gets switched off, it just stays on. I put the computer to sleep, but it doesn't go off. Then over here, we have another, uh, another power conditioner. This is the one that is like the master on switch for the recording rig, right? So it turns on the X32, both sets of monitors, um, effects pedals that I have here. You know, just everything that has to do with production and recording that that needs to turn off at the end of each session. So that's what that one's for. Kind of have them separated. The cable management on this desk is out of this world. It's like ridiculous. Um, there's like all kind of trays and troughs and, and panels that you can hide things behind. So it's absolutely perfect for that kind of thing. Below this power conditioner here is kind of like a, an XLR patch bay, but it's not really a patch bay. I'm not patching anything. It's just to get to the inputs better. Since they're on the back of the X32, uh, I have some snakes running from these outputs to the back of the, the console here. So I don't have to go around back and, and try to like plug things in like awkwardly. Um, I can switch around inputs on the, on the front. Everything is coming up through this little a cable management hole and it just pops right out and everything plugs right into there. So in the future I could expand on that if I really wanted to. Um, it's kind of all, you know, it works in progress for now. Here is the JHS Color Box V2. The Color Box is supposed to be like a preamp. If you want it to be a preamp, it could also be like a dirt pedal, distortion, overdrive. It kind of, it's just like a coloration type thing. 
Um, it's one of those vibe pieces. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to use it in my workflow. I bought it with the intention of putting it in my vocal chain, going into Pro Tools uh, as I record to kind of color my vocal and give it some saturation. But I haven't really found settings that I, I'm happy with yet. So right now, it's just a glorified bass guitar DI. And this is what I record bass guitar through. Um, so yeah, that's that's what it's doing right now. <laughs> it's it's Again, it's a little overkill for just for that, but it's one of those things that I'll, I'll learn how to use it more as, as we go. So, hopping back over to this side. Um, this is the newest piece of gear. It's the uh, Mackie Passive Big Knob Volume Control Monitor Select. Um, it's got this nice huge volume knob here. It's got mute, got a mono switch, which is nice uh, to have like a hardware piece that just puts you into mono right away. And I can switch between these big Sterling monitors here or these smaller mix cubes. So these mix cubes have kind of a funny story attached to them. I posted on my Instagram story about, you know, thinking about getting a pair. Uh, follow me, by the way, at Alex Melton. Uh, I do a lot of behind the scenes over there and um, sometimes do some polls and things. So anyway, this music store, Alto Music, saw my Instagram story and they reached out to me and they were like, hey, we'll give you a good deal on these. Just let us know if you're interested. So we worked out a deal and now they're here and they're awesome. It really helps to put things in perspective when you're mixing to just hit this one button and switch over to a completely new pair of monitors in different positions with a completely different sonic character to them. Uh, and it really can, can help you like, you know, instead of having to bounce out a file, take it to the car or downstairs on the Bluetooth speaker, you have a second source ready to go right here at the push of a button, which is amazing. So shout out to the guys at Alto Music for hooking me up with these. Go check out their website. Go support them since they support small creators on here. And um, yeah, I'm super happy with this setup right now. So that's kind of the whole desk. Oh wait, no, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot about the tray. Um, so uh, in the keyboard tray here, I have an Alesis VI49 uh, MIDI controller. And this is what I run all the soft synths with, and all of my drums, actually. Uh, I, I play the drums here on the, on the pads, and then I go and edit and quantize and everything afterwards. So a lot of the drums you've been hearing on the projects in the last year or so are all MIDI drums. They're Get, Get Good Drums is the brand, and then the instrument is called Modern and Massive, and it's got a lot of good stuff for like rock and pop punk even. It's got so many snare drums to choose from, a lot of different drums and cymbals and, and everything. So it's it's a really good program. I have I have a video on that too, actually, uh, just talking about that software and, and the presets I use and everything. So I think that's it for the, for the desk. We can move on to the computer. So this is a fairly recent purchase. I had an iMac, 21 inch iMac for years and years and years. I bought it at, in 2013. And I used it all the way up until like right in the middle of quarantine, I bought this last year. And it's just like the newest updated version of the iMac, like middle of the road specs, nothing crazy. But that old 2013 machine was, uh, you know, barely hanging on. So I got this, which allowed me to upgrade all of my plugins and my Pro Tools subscription. I got it all like up to date and everything works flawlessly. I love Pro Tools. I love everything about my workflow. Would not change a thing. Um, that might be a controversial. <laughs> take for some of you Logic users. But I, I do own Logic and I've used it a few times. It's just the workflow is so foreign to me at this point. I'm so used to Pro Tools. But anyway, my headphones that I use for tracking and a little bit for mixing. I'm not a big headphone mixing guy, but these uh, DT770 Pro headphones, I really enjoy them. They're comfortable. They sound great. So I think that's the whole desk. I think we can move on. So this area here is a little hard to see probably right now because this window is blowing everything out, but it's kind of like the instrument wall a little bit. You've got the acoustic, the Taylor and the, the Fender Acoustasonic here. This piano, this is, um, this is kind of a very important piece for me. It's just a hardware piece that sits in the corner and it's always on and I can, you know, just play out a little melody and then go straight to the microphone and sing that melody. It's super helpful for reference. I think I'm gonna do some like acoustic treatment that fits right into the window. Um, that way I kinda of kill two birds with one stone when I don't need the natural light, I can throw that in there. Uh, so yeah, that's that's that little corner. 
Um, you can kind of see in the very corner here, I have them in three of the corners in this kind of half of the room. These um, homemade like base traps that I tried to build a few weeks ago. I'm absolutely positive that I did it completely wrong and not to spec, but they look cool to me and I think they help. I mean, they certainly, they're just large masses of, of uh, insulation. So they have to be doing something for at least a flutter echo or something. I don't know. I'm not really like huge into the whole uh, knowledgeable about room treatment thing, but it is what it is. So let's spin us on around to the guitar nook. This is the wall directly behind the desk. So when I shoot anything from the desk perspective, you get the nice logo in the background. Right now I have this packing blanket that's sitting behind my vocal mic just to give it a little bit of extra treatment while I still work on the room a little. But anyway, uh, there's the guitar rig. This is what I use for literally everything. Uh, it's just this orange tiny tear with the 112 cab with the 609 microphone dangling in front of it, just a little bit off of the, um, off the cone, off the center of the cone. There's a pedal board down there. We'll go over that in a second. So yeah, it's a nice little nook to keep all the guitar stuff. Maybe there will be a, another guitar hanger here or some kind of decor. It's a little barren right now, I understand. All right, really quickly, here's the pedal board rundown. We're going into the Snark Tuner, into the Custom Comp, which I leave on about 100% of the time, into this EQ pedal. Uh, and the only thing I use it for, I keep it all flat and I just give it a slight boost on the, the level knob all the way to the right. And I just kind of use it as a clean boost. Uh, when I go into the, the amp, I can kind of kick that on if I need just a little bit of extra dirt. Then we go to this Maxon overdrive. It's like a tube overdrive. If I need some like crazy, uh, you know, more distortion stuff or, or really heavy gain stuff, I'll go to that. Um, so then we come out of this pedal into the DD20. I use this a lot for like uh, dotted eighth stuff and space, spatial effects for uh, solos and I'll use it on a lot of my Blink, Angels and Airwaves type guitar tones uh, to get that kind of iconic Tom DeLonge sound. Then the, the Hall of Fame 2, which is really cool because it has a bunch of different models and it has this weird switch where you can kind of hold it down and you can make it do different things depending on what mode it's on. Um, so that's the whole rig and uh, we are going into the Tiny Terror here. Uh, all the effects are, you know, just going straight into the front of the amp. There's no like returns or anything. Um, and yeah, there's kind of, you can see my settings there. Pretty high on the gain knob. The tone stays a little bit below noon, maybe like 10.30 or 11, just because I play a telly and it's super bright. Uh, and the volume is to taste whatever I need in the studio at the time. And that's really the whole guitar rig. Everything I've recorded in the last year has been through that Telecaster and this exact rig. So there you go. There's a guitar nook. So we'll spin around one more time. This is uh, the other side of the room. It's kind of blocked off at the moment. But uh, we have a guitar rack here. This, my dad built this guitar rack for me several years ago, and it's one of my favorite pieces still. We've got a big uh, softbox light up there for when I'm shooting desk stuff. Um, yeah, and there's the vocal microphone. It's the Lewitt 440 Pure. Love those guys at Lewitt. They make quality stuff, and they've been working with me for a couple months now, and i um, super excited to continue doing cool stuff with them. And I really enjoy this mic a lot. It's um. It's very easy to work with in a mix. You don't have to kind of massage it with EQ or anything. It just sounds good. It just sounds good. That's it. So this packing blanket is being held up with uh, a couple of a couple of mic stands in like a T position. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, that, that's the that's the vocal mic setup right now. I like I like to have it close to the desk so I can like hit spacebar and jump back and forth really easily. So I'm gonna to switch to my iPhone here just so I can show you uh, the video equipment. I've mentioned these lights a few times. Um, they're just like Amazon softbox LED dimmable color change 
deals with it. It comes with a stand and like 30 bucks a piece or whatever. I've got two of them. This one I was using outside and it fell into a fire pit and got a little burnt, but it still works fine. Um, so yeah, as far as camera, I have been using, oh God, hello. What is this, the Canon SL2. I got it maybe like five or six years ago. I can't remember. But I've got the, the 10 to 18 millimeter wide angle on it. Uh, it's got the flip out screen and it's got this Rode uh, microphone on the top. This is what it looks like. So that's the audio that you were hearing throughout this whole thing. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's a solid camera. It's no 4K or anything like that, but it does shoot 60 FPS if I want it to uh, in 1080. So that's not terrible. So yeah, uh, I'll show you the other half of the room. So this is, you know, this is my vocal tracking area. And then you go behind this curtain and that's the entrance of the room here. This goes out into the hallway. It's, it's just boxes on boxes, but there's a closet for storage. This is where I do some filming. Uh, here's the drum set. Now, uh, some of you guys were asking about uh, miking up a drum set. And again, I haven't mic'd up a drum kit in probably like a year. These drums have uh, mesh heads. It's, it's not real. Uh, this is so I can like sit down and kind of lip sync, but drum, drum sync the uh, recorded parts from the MIDI and just make it look like I'm playing drums. That's, that's it. They, they make no noise at all. There's a little bit of cymbal noise that I have to deal with, but obviously that, that doesn't cut through uh, neighbors' houses as much as a bass drum would. So uh, yeah, that's, that's it for the drums. Sorry to disappoint you um, if you were looking for like a drum, in-depth drum thing, but definitely just go buy that modern massive kit. It'll get you started like immediately. So this is Mochi. Uh, she's my first cat that I ever got. She's, I've had her for about three years maybe. I uh, got her when she was maybe one or two. Um, and yeah, we got her from a shelter and she's been wonderful. And this one over here, this is Bagel. Hey Bagel, 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 Bagel. Hey, this is Bagel. She is um, a rescue from the streets. Uh, Bagel was outside of my fiance's workplace about to get run over by a car. And my fiance went outside and grabbed her and kind of kept her in a cardboard box uh, until she was able to bring her home. And we, we weren't sure if it was going to work out at first uh, living with Mochi. And Mochi really took her time to kind of get acclimated. But, um, you know, they tolerate each other now. They even cuddle together very, very occasionally. But they also like to fight. Play fight. Not really fight. There's never any claws or teeth. But, um, you know, they, they have a, a nice little sibling rivalry happening. Uh, Mochi's definitely the, the good cat. She, she behaves and doesn't do anything bad. And Bagel is more of the rebel child. Um, but you know, they're both amazing and I love them both. And yeah, that's cat tour. Okay. Really quickly, because I, I forgot to do this and I only have like two minutes of SD card space left. Mm -hmm. Guitar tour. Uh, here's the Taylor I got uh, last year for like 300 bucks. Uh, whenever I need to record acoustic guitar, this is what it is. And uh, it sounds great. I love it. It's got this nice, wonderful tone. It's easy to play. Highly recommend. I think it is called the Academy 12. No electronics in it. I just mic it up. Stereo pair of small diaphragm condensers. Next, we have the Acoustasonic. Fender sent me this. And um, I've been using it in a lot of videos. I've got it in like an open tuning right now. And I bought, I bought this slide. I'm going to try to figure out how to play slide guitar. I'm terrible at it. Anyway, yeah, this is the this is the guy right here. I'm going to run out of space. Hold on. Okay. 
So this is my 2012 Fender American Standard Telecaster. This is, I think this has been in basically every video and every song, every production I've done in the last, I don't know, like eight years. I think I bought it in 2012. Yeah, I did. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. I switched out the pick guard to this. Classic sunburst. I'm missing the cover on this switch. Um, but yeah, it needs a little bit of work, probably, uh, intonation-wise. But, um, it's just, it's that guitar that has now become part of me. And it's so comfortable to play, and it's, uh, it's amazing. Here's the bass that badly, badly needs to be upgraded. This is, like, the cheapest bass I found in Guitar Center, like, five, six, seven years ago. Uh, it's just the Squire Jazz Bass, you know, everybody knows this bass. Super cheap, but it, it works. It's fine. It's fine. I'll get another one soon. I have some other guitars over here, but they're all either old or broken or some combination. Uh, and they never get used, but I just don't have the heart to throw them away. Um, yeah, so that's it. Okay, so that's, that's kind of it for now. There's a lot of improvements to be made in here. There's a lot more stuff to add. Uh, this is a good base layer uh, for, for continuing to build on this thing. And um, yeah, appreciate you watching and coming along for the ride here. Uh, new video next week, next Thursday, be a, another, another little tune for you. I recently signed with a management team and uh, getting my business incorporated and everything. And uh, there's a lot of cool stuff coming, so uh, again, thanks for being here, and we'll catch you next week.